let's move forward with talking about building a plan. And that's what it's all about, building a plan. Throughout your Forex trading journey, you will have both ups and downs. It's easy to get distracted by the different trading methods out there, so you need to make sure you have a trading plan that you stick to, whatever the circumstances. Here are our five golden rules for building a successful trading plan. Golden rule number one is to keep it simple. You don't need to be a quant, creating complicated algorithms or game theory scenarios for every single trade you place. Simply. Find a strategy that is straightforward and easy to execute for your particular risk tolerance and trading objectives. Secondly, do your research. By watching this video, you're moving in the right direction. But the more you research the markets and news flow, the more fluent you will become in understanding what makes currencies move, increasing your chances of identifying trading opportunities. Third, be realistic with your goals. Simply stating that you want to double or triple your initial deposit is not enough. Learn to understand risk and reward per trade. Successful traders often have a profit and loss goal on entering each trade. Also, make sure you manage your risk. Work out how much risk is acceptable to you and take it from there. Ensure you're aware of the risk management tools available to you on your platform. Finally, so today we're going to be discussing building your trading plan. Now, your trading plan. And most traders are gonna sit back right now. And I've, I've been teaching this class for so long. And sometimes I feel like I'm lecturing and I don't mean to lecture, but it is so important. Too many traders get to this point and start to think, I actually have to sit down at a computer and write and work out and, and put this all together into a thought paper, into a process. I have to do more than just keep it in my head and keep a couple charts. And they don't do it because it's really work. But so is trading. And unfortunately, trading can be lots of fun and easy by just going on a platform, clicking buttons and saying, ah, look at that, I made some money. Nah, look at that, I made some, lost some money. But ultimately, trading is a business. It may be your part-time job. It may be your full-time job. It is a business. Okay. And if you want to be successful, you need to start out with a plan. Now, there's no such thing as the ultimate trading plan because there are no two exactly the same traders. And every trader has a different trading style, strategy, risk tolerance, market experience. And it's always been better to develop one's own personalized trading plan and modify it as your experience grows. It should be a checklist, not of your strategy. That's only one tiny part of your trading plan. Now, it's a good place to start because I've met, I can't tell you how many thousands of traders over the years, whether it's doing a conference, whether it's doing a seminar, whether it's doing a, a meeting, whether it's doing one-on-one, -on -one. and almost, I would say over 70% of them have their strategies in their heads or they put it on some charts. But the problem is once that chart's moved away and you got another one, what's your strategy? They've never really worked it out. Oh, when I see support and resistance and I see this and MACD does that and RSI does that, I'm gonna do this. Well, that's not working it out. When you write it down on a piece of paper, now when I say piece of paper, a computer screen, but when you actually write it down and write down your processes, you're going to find that there's lots of things you've overlooked or things you've left up to randomness or things you've left up to how you feel today. And you'll find that's what ends up killing you. So ultimately, your trading plan should consist of what trading strategies you're going to trade. And we all need to have more than one trading strategy. You need to have stra trading strategies for asset classes, you need to have trading strategies for you know, when we have lots of political news or we have lots of risk off trading, we have other things going on, we're moving into you know earnings season. Different strategies would apply at different points. And then what 
assets you're going to trade. And one of the biggest failure rates when we come to online trading is the fact is that online trading offers too many choices. Now, like I said, when I started trading, I had to sit in the pits and I was sitting in the pits at the Chicago Board of Exchange and I was only over in the agricultural center. I didn't know what was going on in the livestock. I didn't know what was going on in the other, the energy stocks. I was only over in my one place. I had no idea what was going on anywhere else and I couldn't get the information because unless you were on the floor getting everything ear to ear and seeing the ticker tapes, you had no idea. We didn't have internet news. We didn't have an internet. We didn't have computers. We barely had fax machines and you couldn't get instant data. There was no financial networks and no financial news places. Today, you can be trading Bitcoin at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock you're trading the Euro, one o'clock you're trading Google, at two o'clock you're trading Apple, three o'clock you're trading the FTSE, and God knows what you're trading by four o'clock and five o'clock, gold and some crude oil in there. The fact is, it's not necessarily a bad thing to go from crude oil to gold to oil to, to, uh, to natural gas and back to the euro. But the fact is, you cannot be a master of all of those things. And I only trade today the euro and the crosses because I can only be an expert. I can only be, be following one market. I can only be following all the news that's affecting one major currency and then all the crosses. You can't sit there and absorb and understand everything there is to understand about Apple while you're understanding everything that's going on with Google, while you're trying to understand everything that's going on with oil prices, too, they're too diverse. Now, you could, and there are some traders who don't care about the assets. They care about certain market indicators and certain strategies. And when this, this, and this happen, they don't care what asset they're trading. They're only trading this, this, and that. Okay? That's not necessarily a wrong thing either. But when you find that you write down what assets you're going to watch, you'll stop yourself from wandering. It's like now I know every broker out there is sending all of their traders everything they can about Aramco and the Tata Wall Exchange. Why? Because it's a news item. They want to, you know, their, their job is to make you trade. They only make money when you trade. So their job is to keep you trading, trading, trading. And what happens is it's too easy to get sucked off into an IPO. It's too easy to get sucked off in the hype from Bitcoin. It's too easy to get sucked over into something happening you know, with, with the pound. Okay, And you're not trading these. You're not an expert at these. And you jump around. Having a trading plan where you've written down what assets you want to trade and stick to it, you'll find that when you do this, and write it down, you'll stick to these things. So the question is, where do you begin? Okay, you should begin your trading plan with your trading strategies. It's the easiest way. Imagine you don't have to write a whole novel. You don't have to have an entire blueprint. You have to start somewhere. And then you can keep developing it out and keep adding on things and add and add. I've been adding to my trading plans for 45 years. If you would ever see my office, there are still boxes and boxes and boxes of index cards. Yeah, that's what we had in the old days. Then there's all kinds of graph paper, chart paper, and everything else. Now today, everything is on computer. And that makes it easy because you can search, research, you know, sort everything you want to sort. But start off where you're comfortable. Start off easy. Start off with your favorite trading strategy and write it out in detail. Step by step, everything that you would do to apply that strategy. Don't worry about exit points and entry points. Don't worry about stop losses. Don't worry about actually making a trade. How would you apply that strategy? Okay. Then maybe add on your risk management and sl start slowly and keep adding to this trading plan. So having a written strategy with your risk tolerance and your money management, it's like having a market blueprint. This blueprint is essentially essential for developing the discipline that it will lead you to the road for success. And again, I don't want to lecture you, but I do care about my traders 
And I want you to understand that this is a business. Now, my question is, and tonight, today we're gonna use this example a lot. But if you wanted, if you were, had a job, I don't know what it was, but for most of your adult life, you wanted to open your own business. And for some reason, you wanted to open a women's shoe store. I don't know why, but that's what it is. You want to open it in a mall. You have envisioned in your head how you're going to have your displays, how you're going to attract the women, in, you know, how you're going to sell, what's, you know, what, what's going to be your little uniqueness. You can close your eyes and actually see this store. But you know what? You got kids, you're a hardworking Joe. You can't give up that paycheck. So it's been a dream. Well, your kids are now off at university. You know, the wife is settled in. You've, you know, you've got your money in your retirement account. And you decide it's time to take this step. Happens to be you're in the mall with the wife, and there you go. The store that is empty next to a major anchor store, and you look at that, and you can see your store inside. It is your dream location. Well, you say something to the wife, and the wife says, okay. And you decide you're going to do this. You decide you've got an extra 75000 bucks put aside. It was to buy your second home, your vacation home, but okay. Now, you know, in your estimates you've been doing in your head for a long time, you figure you're gonna need a quarter of a million dollars to get that store started. Okay. Cause you've been kicking this around for a while, just like a new trader. He's been kicking around what he's gonna do and what his strategy is gonna be. He kind of knows the work he's got to put into it. So you call your folks, you call your best friend, you call your boss at work, you call another friend, you call your sister, and they all know you, they all trust you, they, you know, everybody says, fine. Your folks will give you 50,000, your brother will give you 25,000, your sister will give you 25,000, you know, your best friend said he could put in 50,000. Well, you've got your quarter of a million dollars besides yours, your money pledged. Well, you call the realtor at the mall and make arrangements to go in to see him and you talk to him for a while. Well, he starts talking about all kinds of stuff you don't know, you never knew about. He's talking about HVAC and he's talking about all kinds of insurance. He's talking all kinds of build outs. He's talking all kinds of hours you have to work and all types of signage and all types of footfalls and all this other kind of stuff. Well, you realize off the bat, it's gonna cost you a lot more cash because between the rent the deposits, the insurance he requires you to have, all these things you have to have, well, it's much more than you ever expected. Ultimately, the rent within your budget, but the cash outlay. Well, again, we're back to you as a trader. Okay, you've made your decision. You've opened your account, you put some money in there, but now we have to start dealing with the reality of making money. So you start moving full till you call the lawyers, you sign the lease, you hire the construction guys to do the build out and you have all of this kind of stuff and you're learning along the way. But you're also going through a lot of money along the way. Now you need the cash because you've earned through your $75,000. You need the cash from all the people that promised it to you. So you call everybody together and say, well guys, can you give me checks? They all look at each other and they say to you, hey, we promised it and we'll be more than glad to give it to you, but we need to understand how you're gonna pay us. Are we investing your business? Are we loaning you money? Are we gonna, what, how much shares are we gonna own? What percentage? Are we gonna have monthly meetings? Are you gonna have quarterly meetings? How are we gonna know what our profit is? When do you expect to repay it? When do you expect to go, uh, it's turning into the black from the red, okay? Well, all of a sudden you realize, hey, this isn't all kinds of stuff you thought about. So they're all willing to give you the money, but you need legal documents and you've not thought about how much you're gonna give your parents. Are you gonna give them 4.5% of your business? When are you gonna start paying them back? Is it a loan or an investment? Ooh. 
So now, same thing with our trading. So we have to put together our trading journal, which logs all of our trades. This is important because it allows you to analyze your trades and the success of your plan. Okay, you can put in there your daily routines. Okay, now I only restrict myself to trading two days a week. Doesn't matter how busy or how not busy I am. I do not trade on Fridays, okay? And I don't trade on Mondays, period, the end. Those are the days I do my research. Those are the days I do my prep. Those are the days I'm watching to see what assets are doing. Those are also the two biggest days for economic events that sometimes mess up the markets for short-term traders. But this is my choice. It doesn't have to be your choice. But the creation of your trading plan is highly useful as it reduces the possibility of bad <coughs> or irrational decisions. If you have a written trading plan, then you have a trading filter that will filter only high probability trading opportunities. If it's important, it's important to have this written plan because in order to keep a high level <coughs> of discipline, you should be read, you should read it every day. Now, if a professional football player or a professional tennis player has to go on the courts or out on the field and practice every day, they have to do scrimmages. Then they have to go back and learn their plays. They have to go back and exercise their bodies. They have to master their opponents, understand everything about who they're facing and what they're doing. And they have to do this day after day, week after week. Football stars that are getting made millions and millions of dollars that made their names are still doing this. They're reviewing every video and every film of all their prior plays. They're, they're, they're viewing all their competitors' plays. They're preparing for hot weather, cold weather, warm weather. Well, as a trader, why don't you have to do it? If a multi-million dollar football player has to do it, why don't you have to do it? So unlike business owners who generally have to have a business plan in order to provide a strategic vision to employees and to the banks. You can't even walk in a bank today to get a business loan without having a huge completed business plan. You know, how are you gonna know how much you're gonna pay per hour? How many hours you gotta employ your employees? How do you know how much inventory you have? How are you gonna track when your inventory turns? How do you know whether you should be buying, you know, high heels, low heels, or medium heels? You know, what sizes are running in the store, what your inventory is, and when you're, you have to be ordering inventory three months in advance. If you don't have it all written down and figured out, what you're going to find is you didn't hire enough employees, so you have three days a week that there's nobody in the store, and then you have your busy Friday and Saturday where you only have one employee on schedule. How are you going to make arrangements for credit card processing? How are you going to make sure you have enough cash in the register to make change for people? How are you going to accept checks? How are you going to do payroll? How are you going to pay people? You haven't figured it out yet. Well, this is what having a trading plan is all about. It's figuring it out. Now, I use matrices to also evaluate my trades and my performance. Like, I stop all my trading after I've completed 10 trades and do all of my analysis. So, in most lines of business, Time is the main driver for evaluating performance. Not in trading, online trading, because you have no overhead, you have no costs, and the market's always offering you trading opportunities. It's not like, you know, you missed the big whale. Okay. There's no, once you open your account, once you put the money in your account, you can leave it sit there for months on end without touching it while you learn. Because time is irrelevant. You don't have rent to pay, overhead to pay. You're not paying utilities. You're not paying employees. That money can sit in that account until you're, you've mastered it, until okay. you've learned to prepare at everything. But I stop everything I'm doing after 10 trades and evaluate exactly what I'm doing to make sure my strategy hasn't gone stale, that I'm not overlooking something in the market. Okay. But that doesn't have to be for you. So what is the number of trades you will use when evaluating your trading activity? Now, keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Okay, look at it. Log in, and I'm gonna show you with the log shortly. In fact, let me go over and start you off 
with a little presentation I did for you. And we're going to go over, and then we're going to talk about how you can actually build an Excel sheet and track all of your trades to make some of these decisions. should keep in a trading journal. Why is this important? A trading journal records your trading results, allowing you to assess the overall performance of your trading decisions. This information can prove critical, especially in times when you may be experiencing negative results in your trading. During these times, there is no clear reason as to why your trading results are poor. Your confidence can be shaken. You may ask yourself, has the system stopped working? When should I stop trading with this system? Should I just keep trading despite the losses? Not having the answer to these questions can lead to fear and affect your trading. Using a journal allows you to look over previous results and find if there is anything unusual happening in the markets or whether you are deviating from your system. For the journal to serve its purpose, it is important to record the correct data. This includes a record of all trades you have taken and an indication of how those trades have performed on an individual and an overall basis. Many traders use a spreadsheet because they can be easily analyzed and they provide useful information, such as the overall profit and a visual equity curve. An equity curve provides a visual indicator of the overall performance of a strategy. This information can prove invaluable when doubts start to creep into your mind, because a quick glance at the equity curve can restore confidence and keep you on track. You should also record your thought process at the time of each trade, including what you may have been thinking about, how you are analyzing the markets and why you decided to take each trade. It is possible that your judgment is affected by certain things going on in your life, which would be highlighted more clearly when going back over the journal. If, for example, you make poor decisions when something is happening in your personal life, then you will know to avoid trading at such times. It is also important to take a screenshot of the entry and the exit. Not only can you see how well the system is doing by the journal data, but you can also see how well you are adhering to your system when you look back, or whether the system breaks down under certain market conditions. There may be indications from a screenshot that you can use in order to find better entries or to tweak your system. So far, you have learned that a trading journal helps you to stay focused in your trading. You should record all of the trading data as well as their results in a spreadsheet so you can analyze them at a later date. Now, just remember, a goal without a plan is just a wish. So, like I said, the easiest way to start is to start writing down your strategy, what you're going to use as your filter system, what you're going to use to make a decision to trade. Write down what assets you're willing to look at and what you're going to track. Okay. Write down your daily routine. Now, we're not talking about I get up in the morning and brush my teeth, I wake the kids, I take them off to school. I'm talking about first thing I do every morning is I look at the price of the assets I normally trade. Then I look at the charts. Then I look at the economics calendar. Then I go back and put my current support and resistance levels on my charts because that's the stuff I need for the entire day. Okay. And I do this every day whether I'm trading or not because I have all the news. Then I hit my financial newspapers and I look at the headlines. I don't go, I'm not doing research and analysis right now. I'm just getting a general feel for the markets. Okay. Because the feel of the markets is tells you or helps you understand what strategies you might want to be using currently. So I determine what these levels are that I'm going to put on my charts and make sure my charts are up to date. I look real quickly to see if my charts are telling me something. Okay, And this is why you can't trade that many assets. I'm waiting for my charts to tell me something without me doing any in-depth analysis at this point. 
I can say, look at that. There's something going on with the euro US dollar. You know, I get everything up and everybody's off and I can have an hour. I need to go back and do some research to see what's happening here. Now your trading journal should also include how you're gonna place your stop loss. Okay. Also how you're going to exit the markets. You sound, they say that's easy. I want price hits my target, I'm gonna enter the market. Well, maybe you should consider Okay, when price is moving up and it's moved over top of my entry point and I've made some profit, I'm gonna close that half of my trade and move my stop loss up to here and keep it a close stop loss. So even the markets turn against me at that point, I've already made my profit. Okay, or perhaps I'm using this indicator and that indicator and if this indicator, that indicator, don't continue doing what I thought they were gonna do. I'm gonna get out of the market and run. Okay. All of this has to be thought out, written down. because it all makes the keys to your success. Now also, how much money can I use per trade? Or how much money will I consider having in the market at any given time? I have lots of friends that I talk to and they say, ah, you know, they're not rich. They got a couple thousand dollars in their account. They say, you know, I never open a trade for more than 250, $300, you know, in their stop loss, their, their possible risk. But I've seen them and they have 15 open trades. That means they have $4,500 trading in the markets. And even if everything goes, the markets go hog wild and they get stopped out because Donald Trump goes something crazy and they lose $450 on 10 trades only because the market stopped them out because he sent the market scrambling. Oh, it's 4,500 bucks. So I'm gonna help you at this point. Now I've done a lot of research. I've looked all over the place for some type of software to use for building a trading plan. I haven't found any. Now I did put together for you a handout that you can see on your screen. That's the key elements of successful trading. Plan. I put together as much information as I can. If you do some quick research in the market, in the internet, you're gonna find that there's thousands of articles on trading plans and they all sound like a whole bunch of people that are just copying somebody else and rewriting the same word because they don't tell you anything. They're short 400 word content articles to make Google happy. And the fact of the matter is, since your trading plan is personal, it is very hard to give you something in a software that takes care of your personal needs. But I'm gonna share with you what data should be recorded and how you can record it in a spreadsheet. Working with a trading journal. In this lesson, you will learn how to collect and analyze trading data, what you should know after collecting at least 30 trades, what you should know after collecting 100 trades, what are benchmarks, what is a benchmark breach, and what should you do if one occurs. Before trading a strategy on a live account, Experienced traders will test the system using a demo account. You can use a spreadsheet to store the data and analyze it in order to ascertain whether the strategy is profitable over a sustained period. In order to do this, you need to record the correct data. First of all, you need to record the time and date of each trade. This is needed so that you can check and reference your trading after your trading session has finished. There may be times where your strategy is not particularly profitable, such as specific days of the week or particular times during the day. You can ascertain this by recording the time and date of your trades. This data is especially helpful to see how the price action looked at the time when you entered a trade on your chart. The next thing you need to record is the currency pairs that you trade. This is necessary in order to know which pairs are profitable and which are not when trading them with your strategy. You may need to remove unprofitable pairs from your system or explore new pairs to be incorporated into your future live trading. Next, you must always record the entry where you place your stop loss and the price at which you closed your trade. Recording these will make it easy for you to check the risk to reward ratio for individual trades and will ensure that you continue to adhere to correct money management. You can also observe, over time, 
whether your risk per trade is staying within an expected range or becoming higher with individual trades. If so, you can investigate whether this is simply the result of changing market conditions or if you are deviating from the rules of your strategy. It is important for you to record the final results of your trading in pips, percentage gained on the trade, and the cash value. This allows you to keep a check on the profitability of the strategy over time. For instance, you may notice that the system is becoming gradually less profitable. This could be the result of changing market conditions or of not following the rules of your system. Either way, you can investigate whether the strategy is either worth pursuing in changing market conditions or whether you need to make some adjustments to your trading. Now that you have an idea of what to record in your trading journal, we can show you how to use this data further and turn it into meaningful information. Firstly, you can assess the combined overall profit or loss of the system. This is essential in determining whether the strategy is profitable overall. This will help you through losing streaks because you can refer back to the overall profit for confidence. The total amount of trades taken is a significant factor for either developing confidence in your system or deciding whether the system is worth pursuing. If you can see that after a small number of trades you have made a loss, you can still continue trading because you have not taken enough trades to assess the system properly. On the other hand, if you can see that you have made a loss on your account over a significantly higher amount of trades, then you may feel that the strategy simply does not work. Determining the distribution between the system's winners and losers will help you deal with future losing streaks. If the system makes money but only has a small percentage of winning trades, then you can continue to trade confidently when losing streaks occur because you know this is normal for the strategy being used. However, if your system is losing money with a higher percentage of winning trades, then you have highlighted that there is something wrong with the risk management aspect of the system. Knowing the average risk and average reward is vital so that expectations can be more aligned with the reality of the performance. If your risk on individual trades begins to vastly exceed that of your average reward, then you may have to assess your system and see whether market conditions are changing or whether you are adhering to your strategy. Every trading system should be tested with at least 30 trades. This is because many systems have losing streaks and you need a relatively decent sample size to initially assess if the strategy is or is not profitable. If a trading system is not profitable over 30 trades, it is likely that modifications are required or the system is simply not worth using with real money. If this is the case, you may want to find an alternative strategy to test in the same manner. If the strategy is profitable over 30 trades, then you can continue with the testing of that strategy. Once you have shown that the strategy is worth pursuing after 30 trades, you can test the system more extensively over 100 trades. If the strategy is profitable over 100 trades, you can then feel confident taking the strategy to a live account. With 100 trades, you can also ascertain the following. How often do losing streaks tend to occur? What kind of drawdown does the system produce? What is the ratio of winners to losers? A benchmark is the maximum negative impact you will allow to have on your trading system. For example, it may be the maximum amount of trades suffered in a losing streak or the maximum percentage drawdown that the system has suffered. You create your benchmarks by observing the data you have collected while testing the strategy and using the worst result from that testing. So, for example, if the maximum percentage drawdown of your trading account was 10% while testing your system, then this is the benchmark when trading with a real account. You can then consider any drawdown as a natural part of your strategy until your drawdown exceeds the benchmark of 10%. When a benchmark is broken, however, then this is the point when you stop trading on a real account and assess the strategy again. This means going back to a demo account and testing the strategy over 30 trades. If the results or the retesting are positive, then the benchmark can simply be adjusted and live trading can continue. 
If the trading results continue to be negative, then you may have to assess whether your strategy is still worth using. You may need to continue trading on a demo account until the results start to become positive, or you may want to pursue a new strategy altogether. So most of you probably thought trading is an easy thing. I can get online, I can watch the news, I can decide I'm gonna trade the euro, or I'm gonna read the headlines of the paper and it tells me Facebook's gonna go up, so I'm gonna just jump in there and trade Facebook. Well, you know what, if you were an investor and you had, were putting money away for your retirement, and you said, you know what, Facebook's gonna go up over the next few years, they're expanding, they're doing this, they're doing that, so I'm just gonna look for a good price and I've got my you know, $130,000, so I'm gonna buy 100 shares or 1,000 shares of Facebook and put them away from my retirement. That's an easy assessment because you don't really care if you get into Facebook at 132.9 or 133.4 because you're expecting it to go to 160 by the time you retire. But when you're trading, you're looking for small profitable moves and you need to be a lot more aware. But still, I'm not going to risk my retirement on some guess. You know, I'm already past retirement age. So thank God I didn't. Yes, but you know what? I got killed in the, the, the last financial crisis. All the stocks I had bought for dividends, they're still there, but the dividends are gone. So all that extra cash that I was expecting in from retirement went away. So we need to be prepared, but who could predict what's gonna happen tomorrow? But a trading plan will help you see exactly what you're doing, get you to your goals, and you'll find that trading is work. Not bad work, good work. Me, I love testing strategies, okay? Because I don't follow other people's strategies, okay? I look for opportunities in the market that I missed. I look for when the Euro went up 14 points that I could have traded, but I didn't see it happening. And then I go back and say, well, what happened there? And what could I have used to have seen that move? And then I start creating a strategy out of it and changing it and adding it into my other strategies. You can make all of this part fun, not work. Okay, Trading in a demo account and testing strategies is fun because you have no money on the line. And what you're doing is you're just like those professional football players play, you know, out with a scrimmage playing against their buddies. You know, They want to put some effort into it, but they also want to have a good time. Now, we come to a couple other important rules, like when to take breaks. Okay. Now, this is not a vacation, it's not a holiday, it's not a bank holiday. After I've finished and closed out 100 trades, I shut down my computers, I shut down all of my stuff, and I take one day that I don't look at my charts, I don't look at my platform, I don't read the financial news, because you know what? I regain my control of the markets at that point. And that shows I have discipline because I want to reinforce my discipline. It means that I'm controlling the markets, the markets aren't controlling me. And lastly, we have limit up, limit down. Okay. This needs to be important. Sometimes I've gone in the morning and I've put it, you know, set up a trade and it has been absolutely perfect and it's soared way past my target points. I made a ton of money. Okay. Now I have a choice. I can keep on trading for the rest of the day, I can keep on doing what I'm doing, or I can close my computer and walk away with my profit. Well, the rule of thumb is always close your computer and walk away with your profit. The reason being is you get cocky, you feel good, and you find the next few trades, you push them a little bit too far, or you invest more money, because you know what, I made a thousand bucks this morning, so I can put my stop loss a little bit farther down, or I can take a bigger risk on this, or you know what, instead of doing, you know. This size trade, I'm gonna do that size trade. And before you know it, you lost your profit and you're having a bad day. The other thing is if you had a bad day, you know, your trades are turning against you, the market's not doing what you think, you know, the trade you had open, everything's moving against you. Don't chase the money, close down everything, close out all your trades, walk away. Because also when you're having a bad day, everything turns bad. And then you start chasing, but you're also in a bad mood. So you're also not making rational, non-emotional decisions. So remember, limit ups, limit downs, always place your stop losses. And like I said, what you have on your screen in front of you is 
one after searching the internet, I found this form. It's terrible. I wouldn't use it for anything, but I gave it to you in that handout. I gave you in that handout a whole bunch of ways to help you start building your trading plan. Okay. But remember, set up an Excel spreadsheet, track it on that. Today, almost every platform, especially Alvexo, will let you download or export all your trading activity. But that's fine. That's going to give you the data. But you need to have screenshots and comments and notes for yourself on every trade as to why you made it, how you did it. Because tomorrow, when you go back to Analyzer or next, the end of the week when you do, you're going to forget, you know, Trump had just said this, and this just happened in France, and that strike was going on in France, and this is what, you know, incorporated part of my decision making. You forget all that. If you don't have that in your notes and in your journal, then you're just looking at numbers. So on that note, I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. Thank you very much. Have a great trading weekend, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Bye now.